everybody. Uh, welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. How well, are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, first of all, just let's get some business out of the way. First and foremost, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of the people who have been watching the pod, listening to the pod, watching the clips. We've had clips go crazy viral recently. Mm -hmm. Some seven million views just on the IG. Uh, not not counting not not uh, take two, not mm -hmm. counting the TT, which is the ticky talky. Um, I, I it just it's overwhelming the response. So thank you guys so much. We are starting um, to go on other podcasts and to have people on. The first guest on the podcast um, will be my dad. Oh, Tom Wolf is flying in. Um, I figure if we're going to talk to somebody about parenting and about childhood, and that's what the podcast is going to be about, this is a good dude to start with. I think so. That's should be, that should be fun. Um, and uh, did we decide on that name? No. We didn't decide on that name. No. Okay. But if we do call it Generation Wolf, it would be a perfect episode. For yeah, me. because there's three of three generations yeah, of wolves yeah, yeah, sitting okay. at a table. So you know my, 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 I'm leaning Generation Wolf. Where are you leaning? I feel like Generation Wolf makes more sense. I just like how the way House of Wolves sounds. Me too. But I, I do that like every way, time. I like the way House of Wolves sounds, but I do like, like, I feel like Generation X might make more sense. Generation X? Oh, sorry. Generation Wolf. Oh, See, okay. Also, when I think of Generation X, I think of me. When I, when I, no. I don't think of, I don't think Gen X. When I hear Generation something, I think of wrestling. I think of remember remember oh, D, remember yeah, D yeah, Generation yeah, yeah, X yeah, 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 with yeah. Shawn Michaels and Triple H. So Dude, he, you used to jump off the couch, you and yeah. Austin. Oh my God, yeah. That, so Amazing. every time I hear that, that's what I think of because, well, that's just where my brain goes. Anyways, first episode coming with with uh, Tom Wolf. Um, look, hey man, with three A's, no exclamation point. Hey man, pod at gmail.com. If you have questions for my dad that you would like us to ask him, he will be here. Oh, Matt, just so you know, he's going to be here on a Monday. So we, can we do a Monday? Um, he will be here Monday after the Super Bowl, February 12th. That will be the first new pod. Um, look, guys, we're still going to do pods with just Jacob and I. Um, we're, gonna, we're just going to mix these in. And then we're going to LA next week to be on a couple podcasts. Yep. Which is exciting. So we'll let you know uh, when that happens and where you can check those out. This weekend, Vancouver, BC, I am shooting my special. We still need to come up with, for, with a name for that. Oh, for the special? Yeah, I still you also have, have to figure out what you're wearing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to the mall right after this to see if I can find something. Which mall? Uh, I think it's called the Fashion Show. It's, Fashion. On the, it's on the strip, just so you know. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, it's like right on the strip. Oh, dick fuck. That's going to be a shitty ride in, isn't it? Mm, probably. From here, Matt, how long is the strip? 10 minutes? 15? Okay. We'll find out. We'll get down there. I, I mean, I, it's it'll just have, instead of me going into these stores individually, like the mall will have a Nordstrom that I can just look. Oh, right, right, you right. You know what I mean? You're going to look at a Nordstrom for what you're wearing on your special? Here's what I want, dude. I want elevated me. So I don't want elevated me like, you know, the fur coats that I wear. Right. Not like goofy elevated me, but like me, but like elevated me. Which is which is like a jacket with a t-shirt, jeans, and, and a pair of Jordans. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So I just want to find, like, I would love a jacket like this, but not this. Just a little more zhuzhi than this one. Okay. Um. So I'm going to go and see what I can find. Um, but we're shooting that this weekend. I have released, uh, the Kraken and I have released more tickets. So if you were trying to go and couldn't, um, check out the site when you listen to this or see it and run, don't walk yep. those tickets. I also found out that Thursday night when we land, my buddy, Tony Hinchcliffe will be getting off stage. So we're just going to basically going to go from the. We're going to go to the airport, drop off our shit, and then head over and hang out with Tony and the dudes for a little while. Okay. Wait, what time are we flying out even? I thought we're flying out Thursday night. Thursday night at 6.50. Oh, 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 that's an early flight. Yeah, yeah. And we okay. get in around 9 something. Okay. Um, And so, super excited. Also, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. Guys, after um, 
Vancouver. We're taking a week off, but then we got Buffalo, New York. Mm. Come get some Dania Beach over um, for like Valentine's Day, and then we're in Sacramento. We're in San Francisco. At, when we get back, we have a week off, and then we don't have a week off until Memorial Day. We are out there pounding that shit. That sounds dirty. Rel- relax over there. But it isn't. Yep. Um, but thank you very much, everybody. The um, energy and the excitement and just the general tomfoolery has been amazing. So thank you guys so much. I wanted to get that out of the way. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Where were we last weekend? You want to talk about Indianapolis? Woo! What a great weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yoski, those mushrooms were no joke. Yeah, there were something like that. I've never the seen. The Enigma mushrooms? Yeah, it's a mushroom I've never seen before. Yeah. I had, they had me a goofy as fuck. Yeah. You yeah. were up later than you usually were, too. I know, you Usually dude. asleep by the time we get to the hotel. You were up for about another hour and a half or two hours. But Indianapolis was amazing. Yeah. We had a great time. I'm going to tell you, and I say this every week on the podcast, you just get better and better. This weekend in Indianapolis, you were fucking awesome. I had a really good time. Indianapolis had some really good energy. No matter what night it was, every show was, everybody was there for some fun. Yeah. And I could feel it right as I, excuse me, got on stage. So It, it was, was chilly. Yeah, it was one. I got to tell you, I don't know why I think single digit temperatures are funny, but if you're like, how cold is it? And you're like seven, that makes me laugh. I don't know why seven makes me laugh. Dude, it was like that. We did that. We literally did that walking out on Sunday morning, going to the show. And I was like, damn, I was like, I wonder how cold it is out there. And I just turned and looked at you and you went one. one. It's one. That's from planes, trains. Hey, have you seen, did I ask you that? Have you, you seen did. planes, trains? I don't know. <sighs> have you? Okay. Plain strains is one that I, I remember over over quarantine. Everybody, Jacob, he was like, "Hey, I want to I want to start getting into some of the comedies that you watched." You said, "Make a list of four you think I should see." Yeah, and the first one we saw was a movie because this was the first one. I'm like, "Well, if we're right off the bat, I know you've never seen this, and you have to see it, right? Because it's so genius." Is a movie called Windy City Heat. It's pretty amazing. Windy City, Matt, have you seen Windy City Heat? Yo. Windy City Heat is a movie in a movie, everybody. Yeah. Windy City Heat. So this, this dude, Don Barris, who is the ultimate at fucking with people. He found this guy at the comedy store. I forget his name. Mandy? Not Mandy. Well, I can't, why can't I remember his name? I'll pull Anyways, it up. We'll keep talking. So they had been fucking with this dude for year, years. Basically, so what they did is... And Windy City Heat, I think you can only see it on YouTube right now. Maybe I, I, we used to watch it on an old VHS that got passed around, like that Santa Claus versus Jesus that that the South Park guys did for a little while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those that was the original viral when somebody was passing around a VHS, and this VHS of Windy City Heat. So they found this dude who um, wanted to be an actor, and and they fucked with him, and he, I think he thought his name is Perry Car- Perry Perry. Perry- Car- Caravello. So Perry used to hang around the comedy store, and so he, uh, Don, and uh, and uh, Bobcat Goldthwait uh, directed this. Right. He directed the fake movie and the real movie, and you'll know what I mean when I say that. So they, and correct me if I'm missing something, right? Okay. They tell Perry, "Hey, there's gonna be a movie." He auditions. He gets the lead. Guys, the movie isn't the movie. No. The movie is a prank. Mm-hmm. They're pranking Perry, thinking he got cast as a lead in this movie, right? So they have to shoot the fake movie and the The real real movie movie. at the same time. Yeah. They had a premiere for the fake movie, guys. So they had to edit the fake movie. They had a premiere for the fake movie for the real movie. Yeah. It is, and you know what? Like they would say, and Bobcat was so funny, dude. He carried this megaphone with him, right? That he used, a director, you know, stereotypical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he used everywhere, even at lunch. You remember when he was at lunch and then whenever he would talk, he would pick up the fucking yeah. megaphone. So fucking funny. Yeah. But they, like, they would say to this dude, Perry, they were like, well, you know, actors basically do their own stunts. So you're going to do your own stunts, right? So they just fucked with him nonstop. Yeah, they, 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 it was, it was genius. It, it's genius. really smart. To take a dude who is like, who has no idea what's happening, but is a full on first time green in the business, but wants to full on commit to anything that the director is going to tell him. And it just like it, the way it unfolded, because even at the premiere, dude had no, dude had no idea. 
still, he still thought he was walking a red carpet as a star of a Hollywood movie. Dude, Don Barris is genius. I'll tell you something right now, guys. It, it, it's if you saw Jer Jury Duty, right? So good. With James Marsden. So good. Okay. This is Jury Duty. And I would say as funny and more difficult because not only was everybody in on it, except for this one person. Yeah. But they had to shoot a whole separate fake movie. Yeah. You had to shoot two movies in one. Like you had to, the budget, you had to budget the fake movie and then budget the actual movie so around crazy. the fake so movie. Crazy. So crazy. You know what's funny about James Marsden? Dude's never had an, uh, uh, an Emmy nomination for anything, except he got nominated for jury duty for being himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is hilarious. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, your brother, uh, your Uncle Jonathan is buddies with him. Is he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, Uncle Jonathan knows a bunch of people, dude. I did know that. Yeah, yeah, he knows a bunch of people. Yeah. But, but, Wendy City, he, woo. Yeah, pretty funny. It's, it's, it's like, it's like top notch. If you like fucking with people, or you like watching people being fucked with, Windy City Heat is 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 legit. your movie. Legit. Yeah. legit, legit, legit. You know what's funny is do you remember the second movie you watched that you fell asleep in, in the middle? Not no, because I probably because I fell asleep in it. I definitely don't remember. I was like, I think you should either see Airplane or Naked Gun, just that type of movie. Right. And I showed you Naked Gun, and I think you fell asleep fifteen minutes in. Pick a better movie next time. <laughs> 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 pick, a, pick a better movie. I don't know what else to tell you. Have you ever seen Stripes? No. Yeah, you only need to watch the first half, but the first half is like legit funny. What's the second half? It, the, you know what? My gripe with most comedies is that they don't stay funny the whole way through. Yeah, it's only like, yeah. They yeah. feel like they, they can be funny in the first half, and then they have to stick to the story second half, which they do. But you can stick to the story and still be, look, watch This Is The End. Super funny. Funny. All, all the way through. Oh, from fucking beginning to Danny Masterson, not Danny Masterson, sorry. McBride. Danny McBride coming back, right? Yeah. The, As, uh, the whole thing of like the demon and Jonah Hill or just them on the staircase going, and like Dude, the fucking fake, the masturbation. Fake, fake masturbating on each other is super funny. The, the, oh my God, that's one of the funny hardest I've ever laughed in a theater. That scene, that a couple in Tropic Thunder. Yeah, but, that, that one where somebody kicks a season Zari down the hole, oh, um, true, where man. they see Danny McBride and Channing Tatum, and then Franco thinks he's going up and then gets dropped. So like all, all, all of it. The the second the second coming where all those lights come from the sky and they hit the giant demon and they yeah. cut his dick. Like the whole everything from top to bottom in that movie is funny. I'm gonna tell you something right now. This is gonna be controversial, but this is the end. If I'm ranking. Movie, uh, movies that made me laugh the hardest in the theater, it's in my top four. Easy. Tropic Thunder's up there, too. Yeah, uh, First Jackass is in there, too. And I, that I, one we saw together, the slow-mo one. The slow-mo Jackass? Jackass 3. Remember you and I saw 3.5 in theaters together? T oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. That first Jackass, dude. Well, it was also groundbreaking, though. Like, no one had the ever... The first Jackass. No one had ever done that. Opening scene when they're in that giant shopping cart and... Just explosions going off behind them. And the first time one of them punched the other one in the face, Yeah, we were all like, what the dude, fuck is this? Still, it was amazing. Still to this day, okay... I have two jackass skits that are to this day my f absolute favorites. Okay, go. My number one is the high five. So, like, do you remember the one where oh, they were two. they were in the office building and we man would be sitting there kind of chatting? He'd be like, "Oh, hey man, good morning, high five. And then fucking, <laughs> and then Johnny just lets go of this giant hand with flour attached to it. Him hitting Bam Margera <laughs> with that fucking hand. <laughs> Oh my god, Yo, dude! What about the fucking where they would get closer to the door to read it, and that some that oh, fist would, the come, fist out. would come out? <laughs> and then on that same note, where they would just do a slow mo after punching <laughs> someone in the face, like that one where they put on a giant boxing glove and just punched uh, Preston as hard as he could, my god. and did it in slow mo to watch his face jiggle was super funny. You know what fascinating me that my friend Stephen Randolph told me, I think it was Stephen, I forget. Somebody told me that they heard Johnny Knoxville talking, not Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, one of those two, talking about something I hadn't even thought of. That during Jackass, when it was at its height, mm -hmm. they had a 
a, a hall pass. They had a green light to break any law and yeah. do anything they want because people wanted them to walk into their establishment and fuck it up. Yeah. People wanted Steve-O to take a shit on their car. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Dave like, England would be the one shitting. But you know what I mean? But, 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 but like me and Dave England, me and Dave England are two of a kind. I it, want you to know that Dave Lingling. Is that Dave, what he said? England. Dave, Dave England. England. Yeah. But that shit, dude, when I, when, is he the one who took a shit in the toilet? He's the guy who can shit. He's the guy who can shit anywhere. Yeah, dude, that dude who My, took a shit in the hardware dude, store. Dude, Dave England also did that where they did like a mini diorama of a bathroom and then he was just on top of it and it was a full was human funny. size poop. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. That was like, funny. Yeah. D Dave England and I are two of a kind. But I hadn't thought, dude, you do. I do do. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, Dave England and I have the same exact thought. Yo, know, if I got to poop, I got to poop. Doesn't yeah. matter where I am. Uh, did I tell happen. you, dude? I disagree. There's some places that are just for emergencies, like the airport. The airport is not for a casual poop. It's for emergencies. Here's my thing, though. Like... Is every poop an emergency? No, no, not every poop is an emergency. But if it starts out as a casual, it turns into an emergency. It goes from casual to casualty. Okay, like <laughs> why? Why? Because would if I, if I get every poop goes from casual to casualty. No, but I'm saying it can, and also you never know. Like in a matter of seconds, you've had ones that are like, oh, you're all right, and then you try to trust the fart, and you're like, oh, it might be game over right now. hundred percent. I'm not saying it's for everyone, but I'm saying just like if I ever feel the need. To have to use the bathroom, and I have time and a place that is. Yeah, you really don't care time place. Huh? No, man, because I don't want to be like the woman who shitted up the whole entire plane. Yeah, I'm I don't want to be the person who gets put on Instagram, TikTok, whatever for going viral for shitting themselves in public. So, can I cannot do that. I poop when I have to poop. Yeah. Can I tell you? I didn't tell you the last time. Yo, this is the epitome for me of because if you poop. In the airport bathroom, it's an emergency. And this is the... <laughs> we were in the... It usually sounds like emergency to everybody else. We were in, in the bathroom, and I just hear somebody in the stall, and there's this... Uh, and then it sounded like he threw, like, like a bunch of nickels in the toilet. Dun, 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 dun. And then he just went, oh, why is this happening? <laughs> I couldn't imagine how hard dude, his... I was like, it's happening to all of us now, dude. I couldn't imagine <laughs> how hard his poop had to be to make it sound like metal hitting porcelain. Uh, not, it wasn't metal hitting the porcelain. It was nickels dropping in the water. Doink, 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 doink. Uh, it wasn't like... Ding, oh, that's ding, what I'm ding. saying. I, I thought you were saying it sounded like BB guns hitting the no. fucking porcelain. Which might way, have been funnier, actually. That's another thing that we used to do. Did you guys ever shoot each other with BB guns? Yeah. Okay, just making sure you guys weren't total pussies. No, I had, well, I had friends who had airsoft guns and paintball guns. Did you shoot each other? Those paintball guns hurt, huh? Oh, by the way, do I you didn't think the, you guys were pussies. Do I'm you remember joking. the first time I came back from growing paintballing? Yeah, you had a fucking bruise. The bruise is an understatement. Yeah. Okay, I want, look, first time I ever went paintballing, uh, just a PSA real quick to anybody who, like, paintballs for fun and brings their own stuff. If you freeze your paintballs before you come, who does that? People who like to hurt people because the paintballs don't explode. They just hurt a whole fucking bunch. So they just, they can shoot you as many times because if the paintball doesn't explode, you're not out. Who have you ever, did you oh, know yeah. anybody who did that? When that, when one paintball hit me from range and I picked it up and it was like a rock. Oh, I would go after that dude physically. I was like 12. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. He was a grown man. Yeah, That's my yeah. thing. If you're a grown-ass man going into that knowingly wanting, like you're going into that wanting to cause pain to people. Yeah. 100%. Like paintball doesn't fucking hurt enough, dude. Okay? Like, uh, and so, but that time I didn't get hit with frozen paintballs. I got hit by a dude who was a pro who turned the corner and didn't have one of the little ding, ding, ding guns. He had one with a three trigger. So he could sit there with three fingers like this. And just constantly There's a gun with three triggers. It's all one trigger, but each one you can hit at like it's three fingers long. So you can do this blah, 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 and just it's like a three round burst. And so this dude turned the corner from like 35 yards out. He was ways away. Yeah. Lined me up. I didn't even see him and just blah, blah, blah and hit me out of the nine. He hit me five times. In the same exact spot. With the frozen one? No, the, not the frozen oh. one. The frozen one I got hit in the chest with. Yeah. And I, and I was like, why did that feel like it broke a rib? And I picked it up. And I was like, because it easily could have. Like, yeah. what, what are we doing? And uh, and yeah, that welt on my leg hit me my right leg. That welt, that bruise was like, 
this big for what, like two months almost, yeah, something dude. like that. It was crazy. I also got shot in the head that same day. That's not good. No, that did not feel good. Not a frozen paintball, but either way, it doesn't feel yeah, good. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, dude, yeah. your mom and I watched something on Netflix. What was it about the Gone Girl case? What was oh. it called? American Night. American Nightmare. Yo. Oh, is that like the real Gone Girl case? It's no. Oh. The there is no real Gone Girl case. This is, oh. but they called it the Gone Girl case because they thought it mirrored. I'm not gonna tell you how it ends or anything like that, but I will tell you more and more. Uh, it is so weird because they show some of the police body cam, some of the police tapes and the interrogation, and yo, it is. So disheartening because I've had, listen, people have different views on police officers and detectives, but I've heard more than one person say they're, and I'm not sure if this is the truth. I'm just, yep. yep. Regurgitated. They don't want the truth. They just want to make an arrest. So oh. it doesn't matter. It if like it, right. So if they, I'm not, I'm not down on cops like that, but, but, but if they, if they are, um, it's not, if they, What's it called? Something bias? What's that? Confirmation bias. They've already decided it's you, so now they just have to figure out how they're going to prove it. Right. Right? Confirmation bias. And this case was all confirmation bias. But the fucking bummer about that is, because maybe sometimes as a police officer, I've been in this business for 20 years, I know my instinct, right? But the fact that there's never, that they weren't reprimanded, this was a fucking disheartening case, dude. I'm so glad that it ended up the way it did. It's fa It was fascinating to watch. That true crime stuff, though, man. Because it's always people you don't never, suspect. Never people you expect. Yeah. No. You it's know? always the quiet ones. It's like, it's like, but that always makes me look at your mom. Like, you know, I would never suspect you. Because you're the nicest person in the world. And that is always who does it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And you're the one with the Dahmer glasses. So it's almost like it's a perfect fit. We would be the most unlikely team of like mass murderers, your mom and I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, I don't like blood. That's true. So I'm out on blood. So we would have to kill people without blood, which is way harder. Well, I mean, I would just maybe get them to sip on something. I bet you I could get a stranger to sip on a drink. That sounds creepy. <laughs> I'm not even going to post, gonna, I'm gonna post the context. I'm just going to post you, were, you saying that as a clip. I can't wait. If you were going to be a mass murderer, what's your MO? Like, like what's my motive? Like, what, like, like my motive after like a specific what, person? Like, or what's like, your, like, I think I am, I think I'm definitely, because I can't, I'm not into violence, but I guess if I was going to mass murder, I would do some sort of sedative. To put you to sleep forever. Okay. Yeah. It, I, but I don't, I'm not. That seems like more of a power thing, I guess, because it's like. Yeah, but I'm just trying to not have any conflict. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, that weird for your mass I, murderer? Not I, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just so you know. I, I don't, don't want conflict, man. You yeah. know? I just don't know if you know that you can't be a mass murderer without conflict. Well, people are going to have conflict with me for sure. That's but what I, I'm saying. But the people that I'm murdering, I would rather that they just go to sleep. I don't want them to be mad. <laughs> I would be terrible at it, dude. I'd be ter <laughs> You're terrible just talking about it. Can't even play the role. It's not even a commit to the bit. You're like, but also you can't even take it seriously. Like that's my thing. Is like, like, like some some mass murderers, some serial killers, they have like a tag, right? So at every kill, they leave. Um, they leave something, right? Oh, dude, I would get, I would get a little, a hand stamp. Like you're going to a club. You know what I mean? It's a bad idea. But, but have it be a wolf. Boom. Easiest way to track you. With a hand stamp? You look for people who bought a wolf hand stamp anywhere in the city and then you can. Whoa, oh, you think I'm going to buy a hand stamp down the street from where I'm murdering people? You just said you didn't want conflict. I don't know how smart you are at this point for being a mass murderer. <laughs> you said, I don't want them to be mad when Fine, I kill them. I will draw a wolf with a, with a, uh, with a so, Sharpie. So you're branding your victims with your last name, essentially. Maybe that's not the right. Maybe Thank that's you. Not. Thank you, man. <laughs> maybe that's I not the right. I wasn't going to say it. I was just going to kind of let it unfold. <laughs> maybe that. All right. All right. So forget a wolf. I'll just draw a duck. <laughs> it's an animal. 
You know what I mean? It's an animal still, so it's not a wolf, it's a duck. Oh my god. And they should have ducked. They should have ducked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they should have ducked. Okay, but that from the wolf. Duck. Okay, right, Bonk. but that doesn't make sense. Well, no, now if you're gonna be a wolf, you might as well draw a pig because, like, the big bad wolf and the three little piggies. Uh, not terrible either. But so, like, should have du- should have ducked. Yeah, means like, like for me, if you're a serial killer and you're saying it should have ducked, yeah. you're not injecting people. You I'm not d- injecting. I'm having them drink something. Yeah, either way, but yeah. like, should have ducked sounds like your 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 way of killing is. Is is is, is, what, like, is, the, is like swinging a wrecking ball at them? Something at their dome, like yeah. they should have ducked, right? Like, how, how do you think that? But and I want to get to your mass murderer. But le, how do we? By the way, now that I'm thinking about this, you know what I think? One of the dumbest sayings is "heads up." Yeah, because then you put your head down. Well, you look up. If something's falling, like that, the idea is like "heads up." Something's coming at you, your head. What "heads up" makes you look? Like I always look up when someone says "heads up." Well, I always look at when someone says heads up because I'd like to know what I'm trying to run yeah, away from. But you're opening your face to whatever's coming in. Yeah, 100%. But I also am just trying to get eyes on whatever I need to avoid. Because if he says heads up and it's like there's something small coming at me, I may not move out of the way and just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Or risk it. But if he says heads up and in that cartoon scenario, a grand piano is falling from the top Amazing. of the building, like I'm, I'm running. But like I need to know what my what my danger scenario is. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I get the heads up kind of, but like if it's saying something for like, watch your, like, like don't get hit in the head. Watch your head is like, 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 or like watch, watch your head makes me duck. Heads up makes me look up. Yeah. Well, heads up. Like I said, heads up is like, I, I should be alert. Like, what am I looking for? Kind yeah. Of thing. So yeah, I agree. I get it. I get it. But also I understand what you're saying. Cause when you say heads up, you put your head down or you're supposed to put your head down. Yeah. And that's not how that works. Dude. And then let's get on to what you want to talk about. But how surprised are you that A, the hoodie hasn't been hired yet? And B, by the way, Bill Belichick, and B, only one team has shown any interest in him. And it's the Falcons. How are the Chargers not jumping all over this dude? I don't know. Maybe because they don't want to bring him into bring him into to because they because they don't want to win because they want to hire another Brandon Staley because he tortured them for years because they've never fucking hired a good because they won't spend any money on their coach but they'll fucking go forty million over the salary cap. Maybe also Belichick doesn't want to go. Maybe it just might be I, some. It, it might be something. Who knows? Who might, doesn't want to live in San Diego and coach Justin Herbert? They play in Los Angeles. That's true. I forgot about that. Not San Diego anymore. And also, like, who knows? Like, we don't know Belichick's story or who he is a person. Like, he might have beef with somebody in the front office and may just may not want to go to the Chargers organization. Okay. Because there hasn't even, it hasn't even, we haven't even heard something say, like, the Chargers have reached out to Bill Belichick. It seems like a pretty mutual something. Yeah, nothing, yeah. Seems like it must be like a mutual thing between them that Belichick is not going to the Chargers. Yeah. It is the best place for him to go. I agree. Young team, great quarterback in Justin Herbert. You get to live in a fucking great city. But also at the same time, it's like Belichick, Belichick doesn't want that LA life. Dude, can you imagine having Belichick, Andy Reid, and Sean Payton in the same division? Sounds terrible. Crazy. Um, dude, by the way, one last thing. Uh, and this is health stuff. Yo, I want to say this to everybody. As I am maybe stronger than I've ever been in my life at 54. Dude, yesterday. Uh, Delphine put me through a workout in my, and it was a, one of those HIT, the, you know, high intensity and interval and Mm. yo. So I was doing pull-ups and that was part of the, I finished on my four set. No, I don't. And I, I refuse to do CrossFit Kipling's. Is that what they're called? Kipling's. Isn't that when you pull up and you swing your whole body? Oh, 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 um, no, not a Kipling. I did CrossFit. I can't remember. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a modified pull-up. So I I refuse to do that. I drop, I do straight up. Yo, dude, I want to tell everybody who's struggling or it's never too late. It's not too late. It's never too late for you to, and I've said this on this podcast before, more importantly, most important than anything, pick real, pick something realistic. Right. You're never going to look like Chris Hemsworth. Uh, because y- your job is not to look like Chris Hemsworth and yeah. Chris Hemsworth doesn't look like Thor on any other day that he's not playing Thor. 
And I want you to know the, the shirtless scenes that you see, so much work has to go into him a day before just to look like that. Do you know they cut water for a day? Really? You do to get that shredded and to be like that, you you have to be parched. No extra water. You also also gotta remember push ups, sit ups. Well, I'm I'm just saying before like, they do the fucking scene. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you know it's funny in in uh, in high school before I went to parties, I used to do like I used to do push ups or whatever because it would make my arms look bigger. Dude, <laughs> dude, fucking my, yeah. ar my arms aren't that big to begin with. I just wanted them to look regular size, <laughs> so I used to do like. I used to do push-ups or like lift shit in my room before I left the house. If I've ever done anything shirtless in my entire life on screen, I've been doing push-ups before I've gone out there. Absolutely. Are you kidding? But point being is this. Yeah, look, post-pump, your body looks, post-pump is great. But, but, but point being this, don't, don't set your goal at Chris Hemsworth. Set your goal that's, that's realistic for you. And, and when, you, when you hit that goal, you're going to be so fucking happy with yourself. But if you set goals that you can never hit, you're going to just call yourself a liar all the time and beat yourself up. And right. that voice in the back of your head that calls yourself a piece of shit will get louder and louder. Quiet that voice down, man. Just keep hitting goals that are realistic and something that you would do. Right. And nothing great has ever happened by, by not making yourself uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So you just make yourself a little uncomfortable. Do some things that are going to change how you think and how you move and how you feel. You got to change. You have to change behavior before you want to see change. But guys, I'm so fucking jacked up. I think I'm going to, because enough people have reached out, just do like a weekly kind of recap of the workout and the food. Um, just so you... So you can see one person's journey and, and, um, it'll help you down to write it down like a food journal for me. Yeah. 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 So and that you can remember what to tell people. I'll tell, else, I'll tell you something else. Nothing will change how you eat faster than writing down everything you ate for a week. When you go back and look at it. And if you're like, if you don't eat well, when you go back and look at it, you'll be like, what did that? fucking that's what i ate this week yeah, yeah yeah nothing like you writing it down and looking at it will we're, if it's something you want to change we'll change it um but guys i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little more in tune with the uh health journey a lot of people have been asking me about it um and so i'm gonna share with you what i do and what i find out and then you take whatever you want and then you leave whatever you want it's like uh it's like uh one of those free libraries when you're walking in the neighborhood I don't know if it's a free library, but it's like one of those little book. book yeah, that's take, what I mean. Leave a book, take a book. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Not a free uh, library. I mean, actually, it's all, all free libraries. All libraries are free. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, all right. Hit me. Um, okay. Uh, there's, there's two things I really want to talk about. Uh, there's three things, but there's this one. This one just is ridiculous to me. It makes me laugh. We're, we're sports guys, right? Yep. Go sports. We like sports. Yep. Um, and there's something hit the media this week where Tristan Thompson has been suspended 25 games without pay for violating the, the NBA's uh, PED PED policy. Yeah. How is it that a 35 year old dude who never had a prime? I'm not going to give Tristan. He Thompson a, sure the fuck did have a prime. Oh, what? Still scoring seven points and grabbing 10 mm. rebounds on that Cavaliers team with LeBron. Yeah, dude, that's what he was asked to do. That's like saying Dennis Rodman didn't have a prime. No, it is not. It sure Are is. Are you comparing Dennis Rodman to Tristan Thompson he is right a, now? He is a poor man's Dennis Rodman, but he played defense. The he poorest got tough. of man, nah, Dennis dude, Rodman. That do you when he, when Tristan Thompson? He's not Dennis Rodman, guys. So save your comments. But yo, he was exactly what they needed: defense, hustle, toughness, rebounds. You, if he scored a point, that was bonus. He wasn't on that team to score a point, dude. No, a hundred percent. But yeah. I didn't see him as a tough thing at all in on that team. Oh, dude, he was a tough dude. And a probably hustle. because of the PEDs. And he could cover fucking anybody at 6'10, 6'11. And when he was young, that dude could cover anybody. Yeah, just no longevity. Dude was was on that Cavs team and with LeBron, and we knew his name for two years. And then he just he just hop team to team. You're I, look, I think I, I think we're overusing the word prime here. Okay. Like <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back. Tristan Thompson had two, maybe three. 
I, I would have to Google Good it. Good season. I don't know off the top of my head, but I would but, say that he was a nuisance for more than two years. Oh, I would disagree with that. But the PED is at 35. PED is at 35, averaging 2-2 two, two, and .5. Like, are you fucking crazy? Like, I get, like, look, I just, it's crazy to me. You look at the PEDs and, like, the people who have been caught over the years, and I look more to baseball mm -hmm. because that's just more where it is in today's day and age. You're not seeing it a lot in in basketball. You're not really seeing it a lot in football. Most dudes in football are getting banned because they're smoking weed. Like, I would say the, the PED rules per sport and testing per sport is just different. Fair enough. Fair okay. enough. But so like when I look at the PEDs in baseball, those dudes, and you look at the years they were using PEDs, home run champions, RBI champions, one world series, like, like the better players in the league, Tristan Thompson could be, he might do bottom 50 players in the league right now. Like Without I, a doubt. I would pick practically almost every bench player whose name I don't know over putting Tristan Thompson in a game. Let me just say like, this. How is it that I'll tell you why? Like what? Why are you using PEDs? Because at 35, at 30, 30 off his mind. Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> at the, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that it, it looks at him like the green goblin mask. It's just like, you miss it. Find another way. It's at like, Oh my God. Like we would be here's how it goes at 35 and his skills are gone. And he all he used to get paid to play defense and rebound. So if at 35 and he's like, I'm not going to get another contract unless I'm f ready to roll in a way that I wasn't since my, I was 28, 29 years old. So you take the PDs in thinking this. So maybe physically I go back to 29 and I have another bit good year and I get a fucking contract out of it. Right. I, I just need, right. Or I get busted for PEDs and I'm out. But I'm out if I don't take the PEDs. But let me ask you this. I, that's it. To me, that's exactly why I did it. Okay. To me, that's exactly why. I, let me ask you this. Okay, go ahead. I have a follow-up for that. You're 35 years old. You're going to be out of the league in baseball. I'm not saying it. And I'm not going to say that. Okay. You're 35. You're 32. Let's go 32. Okay. You're starting to decline. You see people start, and you're coming up on your contract. Do you take the PEDs to get one more big contract or do you, because everybody else is going to, or do you gracefully bow out? Depends on the situation. What's my career look like? Like at 32 for the last decade. Okay. What has, my, say, what, what has my career look if it's I, I'm not going to throw any accusations, but let's just say your name is Adrian Beltre. Oh, wow. That's an interesting, let's just say, if I, if, let's just say Adrian Beltre your career at 32, 33 took a surprising turn up for some reason. Yeah. Okay. Let's just say I'm not. And by the way, he should be in the hall of fame and Absolutely. save your comments. Yeah. Uh, because one of the best third basemen of all time, but let's just say and also just a great locker room. You've, dude. Amazing. Like just a great dude to have on a team. Let's period. just say you've had an Adrian Beltre career, dude. And he had a great career, but I know at my 32, answer. I know my answer. Okay. No, I'm bowing out. I, would never, I'm looking at my career as Adrian Beltre and I'm looking at, I'm declining, but I still love this sport. But what is it worth tainting what my beautiful career looked like just for two more years at a possibly better level? Okay. I think he did eight more years. You but, get my point. Yep, though. Yep. But had he not done the PEDs, he goes to as a smaller role on a different team and rides his career out and leaves clean. Why? take the risk at tainting who you are in people's eyes and the career that you've had just to get maybe a couple million more dollars. You would, they've been playing. Maybe uh, Adrian, Adrian Beltre might not have been a great example because I think when you're that good, like bonds and Clemens, but, but, but those dudes were it's, on roids the entire, most of their entire career, weren't they? Incorrect. Just halfway when they, Barry bonds went on, Barry bonds looked around at McGuire and Sosa, two dudes who could not hold his fucking jock strap as baseball players. Yeah. Two dudes that legit were not in the same stratosphere as this dude. Right. And he looked around and looked at all the attention they were getting and all the endorsements and the people in baseball. He was a forgotten dude. He was a hall of famer pre steroids. Yeah. And he was like, fuck that. Fuck that. Do you want to see, you want to see something? Let me show you something. And, and, and Beltre, I don't know if that was his deal. Beltre to me felt like a dude who was starting to fall out of his prime. Yeah. 
And he, and I think it's more like for Bonds. By just, the way, I'm not accusing him of uh, Adrian Beltre nope. of, of PEDs. Everybody plays Dude, be- better most, after and all, the age but of also, 33. Most professional athletes, if we're being legit, after a certain age, are taking things that aren't tested for to keep their bodies in specific shape. Like there, I, there's just we've talked about this before. There's just no way at a certain age to keep your body from deteriorating. Like I'm not saying Jeter did anything, and I'm not saying anything like that. Jeter is look a Yankee and one of my more respected athletes. Dude, of all I don't time. think Tom Brady took steroids. I don't think either. Okay, so I'm not saying steroids, and I'm not saying PEDs, but they're. And I may correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't there things similar to those in in certain categories that just aren't tested for that what? may give you the same, not mm-hmm. the same results, but may uh, give you some sort of like anything in the PED category is the things that are going to even those supplements like they're so fucking careful about what they can and can't take. Right. I, I personally and I don't know this is a fact. I think the NFL doesn't bust people with PEDs as much. And they make it pretty clear about when you're going to get tested and all that stuff. Because I think, wink, wink, nod, nod, they know in order to recover from week to week, you're going to need a little help. Or you should just start letting them smoke weed. Yeah, but in order to recover, they're going to to need a little help. So I think it's probably in football, I would bet, ah, again, this is just a guess. But in football, I would guess that there are some P there are Uh, more PEDs in it being uncovered. I can see us posting this clip right now and I can already hear the comments of people defending their favorite players. And all I'm gonna and all I'm gonna say to that is this is speculation. Yeah, it's don't take any of this personally. We're not attacking your favorite athlete with the poster on your wall. We're just simply talking out loud. Here's the here's the thing I'll say out loud, and this is not a bad thing. I would have done the same thing. But Kobe Bryant, when he hurt his ankle, where'd he go? You mean the Achilles injury? The Achilles? Yeah, he went to Europe. You know what you can do in Europe pretty freely? Anything. Stem cells. Oh. I would have done the same fucking, not saying that he did it, but he had some injuries where he went overseas because there are some medical things that you can do there that you can't do in the States. Right. You're asking me, I think it should all be legal. Open up the fucking doors. Yeah. Open up the doors, man. Let's see the superheroes play sports. Yeah. I'm totally okay I'm going to tell you right now. It would make baseball a hell of a lot more fun. I, if you had, uh, just think about it. Just think about it. Just think about it. If you, we were in a world, and I'm just rewinding a little bit, Roy Clemens versus Roy Bonds at the plate. And it was a game. They, entirely, did, they did that. I know, but like if, if it was just a season or like of something where yeah. people didn't care, you could choose to do it or choose not to, but you just got to see. I, I that, wouldn't even that, go so far you, as you say get, you get to see athletes who are the best in the world at what they do, just even more amplified for I wonder fun. If, I wonder if like you could have a clean. Uh, yeah, that's right. I wonder if you could do a clean league and a and a PED league. I'm gonna tell you right now that PED league would take over. You mean as far as ticket sales and shit? Yeah. You think we're baseball guys? We like baseball. Yeah. We'll go to a random park. Our team's not playing just to watch a couple innings. We like baseball, right? I'm telling you right now, if there was a PED league, I'd never go back to that regular league. I'm going to tell you. In my I, life. I think most dudes who play baseball would play in the clean league. Because I think the great ones don't want the more even playing field. They want to be great, and they want to be great without the drugs. And I think the people who really... And listen, listen, I'm speculating. But if you're asking me, honestly, hey, dude, excuse me. Oh, I don't remember eating that. Oh, gross. If you, if you're asking me, Hey dude, you're coming up out of the minors. Well, you can either sign a one year, two year minimum contract, or you hit fucking 60 home runs. There's a guy named Brady Anderson. You should Google him. He played for the Orioles in the height of the steroids. I think he, the most home runs he had hit in one year is like 24. He ate 52 like the next year <laughs> and had a huge contract. And he's retired and living off that money for the rest of his life. And I 100% would have done that. Me too. I love when people are like, you got to give the, the integrity. What integrity of the game? They were doing speed in the fucking dugouts before the steroids. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, like, I just, I, and I think basketball, I think they should all, if you want to do it, because do here's it. the thing as an play, as a player, like if I was a professional athlete in how this sports world works, Fuck integrity. Do the owners, the GM, the people who run this team have integrity for me? Of course not. No, they see me as a 
ploy and a way to make money once a week. Yeah. Integrity for what game? No one's got fucking integrity for the game. But by the way, dude, this is why I'm out on loyalty to the sports teams, unless they show loyalty to the fan base. Yeah. It's why I'm out on the Red Sox. They have not shown loyalty to one of the most loyal fan bases in the world. Right. And fuck you for that. Fuck you for fuck you for for continuing to to take advantage of the people in yeah. Boston and fuck you for continuing to take advantage of the fans and the yeah. people who are just trying to bring their family to a, a game, but they can't cause it's the most expensive park in baseball. Yet you won't lift the rock to get some real fucking players. Hey, fuck you for that. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm just not into it, man. Most expensive ticket in baseball and most uncomfortable seat in any park I've ever been to. Ever. It's also such a weird dynamic that the that the um, owners have in every sport implemented where somehow the regular fan considers the player greedy, but not the billionaire who owns the team. Yeah. That is fucking always been crazy to me that you root for the billionaire over the millionaires. I don't think so. Yeah. I, I think also though, in today's day and age, I think a lot of people are becoming a little more uh, educated on the fact that, the players and the coach aren't the ones running this team. You have to look at the higher ups for problems. Mm -hmm. And I think we're starting to see a lot more of those problems start to unfold and come out nowadays. And people are starting to understand that problems with your team means problems higher up. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else you got? I'm trying to think of which one of these I want to talk to you about. Okay. Do you want to hear about a religious scam that a pastor and his wife did, or do you want to hear about a psychic dream Mark Ruffalo had 20 years ago? Uh, religious scam. Okay. So I'm going to pull up the article just to make sure I am, uh, you know, uh, doing all of this right. But this is, this is the title of the article. A pastor and his wife are accused of defrauding their followers for over $1.3 million and using that money to renovate their house. It's the dumbest shit. Like, at least buy a house in a different city than the congregation lives, you dumb fucks. Like, I just... Uh, just go get a different house. Where is that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for... I'm going to find, find it. out where I'm, it is. I'm going to find it again right now. Yo, you dummy McDummersons. Everybody knows, man, how much a pastor makes. You can't be putting 1.3 into your house, you dumb fuck. Go buy a house in, like, a different state. Do yeah. you know? Yep. So uh, it's in Denver. Um, wow. And it's expensive in Denver. Yeah. I've, and he's and this is how it's uh, he's shared a message for his congregation, so his followers and all that. He said after months of prayers and cues from God, he was going to start selling cryptocurrency. He announced in a YouTube video. Um, signature and Silver Banks had collapsed weeks earlier, signaling that they needed to look for more ways to find money. When he said with divine wisdom, he was, quote, setting the rails for God's wealth transfer, end quote. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know either. I love the fact that they put a quote out where I understand all the words, but I don't understand what the sentence means together. Dude. And there was, there was, I was reading it. There was a couple other quotes and one of the quotes from him said, God told me to do this. And then at the end of it, it said, God told me wrong. And I was like, what? First of all, is he blaming God for telling him the wrong thing? Who is this? Oh, I was just going to make a joke. I can't make that joke. Wait a second. This dude threw God under the bus? Straight under the bus. He was like, fuck, God told me to steal, but didn't he say that thou shalt not steal? I was going to say, isn't it one of the basis of your religion is to not steal? Like, don't doesn't he literally, as a pastor, <laughs> preach that every Sunday? Like, I... I I don't even get it. I don't even understand it. Yo. It doesn't even make me sense. He was like, yo, my God house, made me do it. God did like fucking. He's like DJ Khaled over here. Like, what the fuck? Whoa. Like, so how if you are in his congregation, I'm showing up to that house and breaking that kitchen. You are. I'm, I'm showing up to the house and destroying everything. That was my money that went into your wall. Great. I'm taking that piece of that this wall because that's is like, my money. This dude is like, dude, I wouldn't have done that. But God told God was like, hey, steal their money. Why do dude. they need it? And not only steal their money, but don't give it to the poor. You know what you need? Another wing on your house. Dude, he said after. Dude, I hope he put a hot tub in. I fucking hope he put a hot tub in. 
Bro, so in a video last week, he addressed the accusations and acknowledged that people had bought his cryptocurrency and are stuck and un unable to sell. He said, we launched an exchange. Um, the exchange technology failed. Things went downhill. And from right now, we're just waiting on some help from the Lord. Wait a second. So he sold crypto to his congregation. Correct. So he didn't even sell anything that they can have tangibly. He Correct. was like, hey, cryptocurrency. I have this fairy dust that I, and by the way, his congregation's got some money, huh? <laughs> Whoa. I'm Denver, uh, apparently. Dude, tasted here, so here's, bad. here's the quote. Either quote, either I misheard God or God is still not done with this project and he is going to do oh. a new thing, end quote. <laughs> What we're praying for and what we're believing for still is that God is going to perform a miracle. God is going to work a miracle in the financial sector and that everyone who invests it is going to be able to receive money back. End quote. Last sentence of the article, a court hearing is scheduled for Monday. And that was two days ago. Dude, did he say I, I misheard God? God? What was that? Oh, you didn't say steal their money? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I thought he said, hey, sorry, everybody. I was just listening to God. He said, I thought he said, steal your money. He didn't say steal your money. He said, uh, uh, whatever rhymes with steal, deal your money. That is, I misheard God. Ah, dude, that's, that's good. Like, is that not like, a t-shirt somewhere? It's a hilarious book name. Because, you know, some people are like, yeah. are you there, God? And he's like, I misheard you, God. What'd you say again? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Like, oh, Yo, a title of a book would be I Misheard You, God. What'd you say again? Be fucking ridiculous. If What's you just that book about? Uh, I can't make religious jokes on here that I want to make. Well, I, I, I don't, don't want to offend anybody. Is, but is it, a, it, it doesn't sound like a religious book, though. I heard you. Well, for, for I him, misheard you, God. Saying, like if, he, if he wrote that yeah. and said, I misheard you, God, like what'd you say I again? I misheard God is like the... Create. I've never heard anyone dodge accountability like that. Is yeah. But, I just, I just, I just misheard God. I, I, I think the shower was running too hard, and I, I at one point in time, I was, I was just taking getting the soap out of my ear, and I thought he said steal their money, but I just, and I was like, are you sure, Lord? And he said it again. So I just, I guess I misheard him. That, by the way, if you. If he said that and you believe him, you, you, you believe in the wrong God. You deserve to lose all your money. If you believe that this dude just misheard God and you're like, no, he's a good dude. He just, uh, he misheard God. Um, delusional. Oh my God. Delusional. Delusional. That's pretty crazy to have the balls to say, I misheard God. And also, it's it's crazy to me to think he has that crazy, crazy of a congregation and a following that him and this company made over a million dollars in in sales in yeah, that cryptocurrency. is fucking insane. What do you think we should start selling? Apparently, cryptocurrency to people yeah, who believe in God. is to sell something. God, that, God coin. God coin, God dude, coin. is genius. God coin. God coin with a smaller coin of Jesus coin. No, 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 just God coin. God coin? God coin. God coin is a great name for a crypto. Oh, oh, and just a picture of God on there? Just and We could call the stock the Holy Spirit. What's the stock? Like the cryptocurrency, like, you know, obviously if you have a cryptocurrency, like yeah. you have a stock in that crypto and we'll just name it the whole, like the, the abbreviation will be H-L-Y-S-P-R-T. Dude, this is not a terrible idea. Apparently based on how that guy did it, I could make a lot of money. I mean, the, <laughs> here's what I think. The key to real, this is what he really tapped into. The key to scamming people and getting their money is having them buy something that you is there's no physical? It's not a physical form. It's simply yo, dude. The, it, I, it's why I never got into it because it's just, and I'm an old dude, but it's hard for me to wrap my brain around giving money to something I can't put in my hand. Yeah. And now stocks. That's not I material. understand stocks and bonds and all that stuff, but I could go get physical copies, I guess, if I wanted to. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, like, it's just weird. It's always been, I know it's old and I'm old and blah, 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 blah. But, like, I just, that's why I never got into it. Because I'm like, wait, you can make this money on your computer? Yeah. 
I can also buy it, but I can never have anything. Yeah. And I can't really spend it. Like I can't go to the ATM and get money. Well, I mean, I mean, again, if you buy, here's the thing though. Like, so what the cryptocurrency is, is like if like Bitcoin, for example, right? Yeah. If you buy Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is worth whatever the stock is worth. No, I got it. So like that's so you can essentially change that into money. You would just have to withdraw said Bitcoin. You just have to take the money out. Like it's but still, I can't I can't I can't go to the ATM machine. There are Bitcoin machines actually that you can withdraw. Are Bitcoin. there? Yeah. Are you sure? Legitimately. I'm not kidding. I might change my mind on this stuff. <laughs> Why'd you a, deepen your voice? Is like there that? a Mario Brothers Bitcoin? No. What would you name it? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a joke for you. What's uh, what's Mario's favorite type of pants? Dun, 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 dun. Denim, denim, denim. Yeah. It's the same thing, but yeah. you ruined it by just saying dunna dunna dunna. Well, I figured, well, since I said it and then you said I got a good joke, I figured that might be the answer to you it. You didn't even want to try and like come up with an answer though? You just said the same thing. Yeah, probably not. Hmm. Well done. By the uh, way, I want you to know I posted the Spider Man clip online and um you're getting eviscerated. Although there is one person that I will a mean guy named Tank Sinatra. Yeah. Who I know Tank. He say, he thinks Andrew Garfield's the best Spider-Man. Okay, relax over there, Tank. Look, look, look. I, I listen, I'm I personally, I think I think Tom Holland and, and Toby are are neck and neck. They're right the same. Stop it. The same. But, you th- stop it. Let me let me let me make sure I heard that correctly. Matt, I want to make sure I heard that correctly. Did you just say that Toby Maguire is practically as good of a Spider-Man as Tom Holland is? It's not even close. Yeah, yeah. Not even close how far away he is from Tom Holland. No, no. I, I can't believe we're having this conversation. Incorrect. Uh, look, for everybody who disagrees with me online saying they put Toby over Andrew Garfield, that's fine. You, denim, can, have, denim, you, denim. you can have your opinions. Your opinions can be wrong. That's cool. I'm okay with that. This, an opinion, this is an opinion that is not okay to have, be had. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold the phone. You cannot say that Toby McGuire is a close. Is even close to Tom Holland. I just did. He looks 40 in the movie. Tom Holland actually looks like a teenager. Okay. Not 40, 30, but okay. He might have been 30 when he filmed it, but he looked 40. No, stop it. He looked like he was in high school. He played a high school Cat, guy. You think... T- he looked like, I'm wh- going to pull the picture While you're right looking now. that up, let's just do this. I think this will be fun. Let's decide right now who the next Iron Man is. This will be fun. I hope never. Well, they're gonna, they gotta... No, no, they don't. Why would you make another Iron Man? He's dead. Oh, that's right. There's no other Iron Man. I swear to God, if Marvel tries... You don't think they'll try to do another Iron Man? And I'm gonna tell you right now, if they do, none of us are going to see it. You wanna know why? Why? Because there is no Iron Man without Robert Downey Jr. I would agree that it would be really tough to follow somebody... Not tough. ...who is that good. Impossible. There is nobody else on this planet that I could think of that can play Iron Man the way that he did. Do you know who could, except he's just already playing somebody else? Who? Is Chris Pratt. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. N- zero chance. Yeah, he could. He could do it. He could do it. But but he's already playing somebody else. Yeah, he could do it. A guy named Chris, a guy like Chris Evans. But I think it's gonna be have to be a younger cat. Uh, I find it disrespectful that you said you think Chris Pratt can take the role of Iron Man. I didn't think I, he could do it, dude. What does it take? It takes good acting. He's a good actor. It takes a little bit of gravitas. He's got plenty of gravitas. It takes um, uh, uh, being able to um, be funny. He can do that. He does it in uh, Guardians. Why couldn't he do it? But I'm just saying it, w- but, it won't be him. But yeah, it won't be him. It won't be him because he could never play Iron Man. Here's my thing. Yeah, he could play it. You're right. He's dead. I forgot about that. But also, here's my thing. You're right. He could play it like Robert Downey Jr. did it. But no one's Robert Downey Jr. I'm not saying anybody's going to ever be as good as him. I'm just saying, like, if Marvel was smart, they would not remake the movies with actors that you can't replace. I, I would then you're kind of fucked because you, the movies they're putting out right now are doo-doo stew. Terrible. You know, that, I, I watched Marvel's. I heard it was terrible. It, it was so bad. <laughs> and, and can I say something? And look, man, I, I've said this a million times. I'm all for 
inclusion. Representation, I think it, absolutely. Representation. I think it is vitally important to look at TV and movies and print or whatever it is, and as a small person, see yourself. Absolutely. I think that's really important. Absolutely. I think we've gone so far overboard. And if you want to do an all-female superhero movie, I don't fucking do it. I think that's fantastic. But the fact that you feel like you have to do an all-female one and then have one white person, one black person, one Hispanic person, it Look, just do all Hispanic or all black or all, if you want, or all Asian or, or doesn't matter. If you don't want to put the white people in, I don't have a problem with that either. Yeah. But it is so uh, treating everyone like children, like every movie has to be a fucking crayon box. It doesn't. We are all adults here. And if it was like all black women, like the, uh, uh, like the new Black Panther, great, dude. Mm -hmm. This is... If you had been like, yeah, Black Panther, but we do need somebody from Wakanda to be white and one person to be Asian. I'd be like, that is the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. So now, if you're, it just like, it shows me that you're not making what you think would be the best movie. Right. You're trying to get out in front of woke people who are just like, I need to see one of every color. And it's just like so ridiculous at this point. Again, I think the representation is important and then make a good fucking movie mm. and then make a good fucking movie. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It I just swear. seems so crazy to me. I would agree. Yeah. And I feel like also like sometimes like, especially if it's just like, because in that Marvel's movie, obviously like your extras and other people, like it's not just going to be an all white cast. No, it's a world. Yeah. It's right. World. Yeah. But when you just specifically place two people of that diversity, like, you immediately know when you see them on screen, you're like, mm, diversity hire. Like, it just, it, it seems like too Unless, purposefully placed. Like, everybody knows why they have been chosen as that actor specifically. You know, unless in the movie you are showing to me why this is, why mm -hmm. this is like this. And that it's organic and it makes total sense. Cool. But just to do it because on the poster it's going to look cool mm -hmm. and everybody's going to be like, yeah, they did it. Yeah. I just, just make art, everybody. Yeah. And uh, I, I make art and, and again, tell black stories, tell Asian stories, tell Hispanic stories, mm -hmm. tell white stories, tell whatever fucking story you want. But don't feel like you got to sprinkle in one of everybody yeah. just to make sure that people who go to the theater aren't like, I didn't see a Pan-American. <laughs> Fuck this film. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. just, anyways. Uh, it's uh, yeah. By the way, you also keep scooting out of frame because you keep scooting back. You're I'm not, not out of you're frame. not out of frame, but like it, it was never mind. I just meant like centered because remember it's like it just looks like a little just just, just scoot in. Why you gotta scoot in for? Because it's just like the, the 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 spacing was weird. Because you by the way you've been very fidgety this entire podcast. I moved three inches. You're very fidgety this podcast. I am. Yeah, you've been toiling that chair. You you've reached over a couple times. You notice that. Reach, reach over to what? The chair? You spun the chair a couple of times. You like pulled it back and forth. Just checking. You good? You seem to be a little like trying to find something to hold on to. I, I'm going to have to go back and check the tape. Okay. I don't fidgety. You've done a couple reach over. Oh, rel sorry. Pause. You've done a couple like. Well, no, nah, you didn't say reach around. You said reach over, which is fine. Yeah. Okay. A reach over and a reach around, I think are two different things. Probably, but also maybe of the same nature. I don't think so. If you Googled reach over, if you, if you, how about this? I'll Google reach over, you Google reach around and we'll see what comes up. But do images. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You're, I'm going to do images for reach around. Yep. Reach around images. Oh, it's all just uh, yoga or hey, volleyball. Yeah, that's, this is what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, you don't gotta show it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's the reach around. Yeah. Why are you still looking? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's hilarious. But yeah, what what reach over is what? It was like a, it was like a yoga pose or something for like reach over for volleyball, like when you get over yeah, to block not, up the net. That's not what the reach around is. No. But you've been reaching over constantly and like fucking and fidgeting with things. So I was just wondering if you were good. Yeah, man. I'm um I think subconsciously ready to do this material and do this hour. I've been a little punchy today. 
Um, I, you know, and when specials come up, there's a lot of just business stuff, right, 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 that I'm just not good at, right. that I have to do, and it just makes me, I just want to do the art stuff. I right. just want to do the fun, the creative shit. I understand that. And so this other stuff gets me a little, bleh. Fair enough. Um, but I'm excited to get up there and take a pound of mushrooms on Saturday night after the show. Jesus. It's going to be interesting. Are you going to take some with me? Probably. Uh, it flies out until noon, right? Yeah, at least I, that's going to be there. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely doing some mushrooms this weekend. All right. What do you want to tell everybody? ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets, like he said at the beginning of this podcast. We are everywhere this year. We will not have a single weekend off after next week um, until Memorial Day. So we are in every city and a city near you, um, East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, South. Just check it out. ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, Josh Wolf comedy on all platforms. Um, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Com- uh, not comedian. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Um, look, guys, thank you guys again for always tuning in, for saying what's up, uh, for coming to the shows. I hope it's not one degrees in Canada when we go. I don't think it's going to be, so I'm pretty excited about that. Indianapolis, thank you guys so much again for the amazing, amazing energy this weekend. It was one of my more favorite and memorable weekends of comedy. Um, so thank you guys for that, because truthfully, without the energy of the crowd, that's not how I feel. So thank you guys again for coming out and coming to say what's up. And uh, shout out that Indianapolis Comedy Club as well. Good staff, great managers. Good, good. That's a that's a good that's a good club there in Indy. Um, so yeah, thank you guys again. Be safe. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Don't forget your favorite people. Um, I'm not talking about us. I just mean like your significant others. And. Uh, be safe. Tell somebody you love them. Do something something good for someone today. Vancouver. We'll see you in a couple days. Well, wasn't that nice? What wasn't that nice? I think nice? he covered everything. Yeah. Yeah. You did. You covered everything. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, that, that's your time. That when I say do something nice for someone, Vancouver, you see you next week is when you go later. And we end Oh, it. I do? Yeah. Later. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey man. Hey man. You know me, I have an ADHD brain. I'm fidgety. That's just kind of the person I am. So I know if I'm on stage with no hat on, I'm going to be running my hand through my hair every 37 seconds. And that's going to get distracting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think you should run it through that luscious hair. People are going to like that. Yeah, but I, I... And then slow-mo it. But it's going to bug me knowing I'm doing it every 35 seconds. You should run your hand through your hair in slow motion. And then uh, I'll have the DJ play. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. So we, you are a Sasquatch guy. I'm a cryptid guy, or a cryptoid guy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. The cryptids and cryptoids, I don't think the Sasquatch is technically, oh, no, I, Technically, cryptid. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what a cryptid is. So, a cryptid is like a skinwalker or a mothman or the chupacabra or legend, mythical. Right. But they're called cryptids. Okay. So, for me, I'm a big cryptid guy. You know why? Because why the fuck not? I'm in a shirt that says "Let's Summon Demons," um, and it's got pentagrams all over it. Yeah. And I'm also in a Winnie the Pooh uh, headband. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Hey there. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh. Hey man.